kid wanting to do something for the Lord. Amen. And uh, I don't really know what else to say there other than you did a good job. Sis. Amen. That's awesome. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I, to, I honestly had to contain myself a little. I got me a little bit excited and fired up. To, Amen. I wanted to play and sing for the Lord. So, uh, But nonetheless, if you got your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Uh, familiar place we're going to go in Scripture, but uh, for whatever reason, it's where the Lord's had me for quite some time. Actually, about the last uh, few weeks, i got a thing I'll say at the beginning after we read the text, and it's uh, been going on for a few weeks, and I just didn't feel like it was time to pull the trigger on it yet, uh, but now I feel like the Lord has given me liberty uh, to preach this, and I'm looking forward to it. I know we're all a bunch of us fixing to be gone, but I'm praying we go out there and uh, get get a good dose of something, yeah, bring back man. to y'all, and yeah. um, get fired up as we get the bus ministry kicked off, and yeah. we're going to need all kind of stuff when yeah. we're out there. Yeah. We're going to ride the bus route with a bunch of them to kind of get a feel for it, learn some things about it, Amen. and uh, do's and don'ts or what have you, so I'm looking forward to it. It's not just a good sit back and listen to preaching, it's a working trip too, so we can learn something and get yeah, educated, man. and uh, that's I'm thankful for that. Y'all pray for the travels, we greatly appreciate it, I ain't worried yeah. about it, neither here nor there Amen. to me. Whether I'm traveling there, traveling to glory, it don't matter to me today. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, nonetheless, I give I give one of the boys a hard time. I, I told him they'd be better off to fly out here when they come preach. And he's like, "Oh, we ain't supposed to fly. If the Lord wants us to fly, give us wings." I said, "Well, you better figure out what you're gonna do about the rapture then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna fly one day, Amen. Amen. Uh, you better figure out something to do with that. So, but no, nonetheless, it's good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. 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 If you're at Genesis chapter six, say Amen. 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 Uh, I'm gonna. I'll say briefly, you know, when you read verses 5 through 7, you learn how disgusted God is uh, with mankind. Yeah. That he, it repented him that he made man because of the wickedness of their heart and their uh, imaginations and everything. It's just, just wickedness. And uh, I don't think I'm not, I'm not out of the, uh, you know, I'm not too out in left field to say that I, I'm, I'm still amazed today at how wicked yeah. mankind is and that God ain't just wiped us off the face yeah. of this earth yet. But uh, there's coming a day. Amen. So let's just, let, for, for the sake of being a good, uh, loving pastor, let's, let's start out in verse 8 this morning. How's that sound? Amen. Yep. Amen. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt them, uh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be my oh my male and female. I know yeah, God God right. knew you was gonna need a male and a female Amen. to replenish and reproduce. God help our biology departments today. Of fowls of their kind and of every cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall. Um, let me, let me go back here. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all, according to all that yeah. God commanded him, so did he. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for your infallible word. Lord, I thank you for the, uh, the, the devotion, the Sunday school, the singing this morning, Lord, I pray. And ask your blessing upon the rest of the service today, Father Lord. I pray you'd anoint me as I try to preach your word, which you've laid on my heart the last few weeks. God, I help you, uh, you preach. I pray you preach me this morning, Lord, uh, to the congregation, Father Lord, that they would get stirred in their heart, Lord, to maybe conviction if that's what they're in need of. God, I pray you would just do only that which you can do in here this morning, God. 
and whatever it is that we're in need of. God, I pray that you'd put, pour that out on us today. Lord, and most importantly, if there's one here that's lost and doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that's headed for a devil's hell today, God, I pray before this service is over, before they leave this building, that they would give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and get gloriously born again today and snatch from the very flames of hell today. Father, I pray you would do that. And God, we ask your blessing as we travel to the nursing home uh, and over the service there. We ask your blessing back. God, I pray you'd be with Brother Charlie and Brother Jeremy as they uh, try to do what needs to be done here tonight. Be with Brother Gary as he travels to another church to fill in the pulpit there. God, preach him, use him, give him liberty there tonight. And God, we just, we're so thankful for all you've done. Lord, I ask traveling mercies on the group of us that's leaving for North Carolina. Father, I pray that you would fill our tanks and let them runneth over and let us bring it back and pour it out here as well, Father. God, we need you touch in this dark hour that we live in. And Father, I am anxiously awaiting and looking forward to the calling out of the church, Father Lord. I'm thankful that it's on the horizon today, Father Lord. I love you. I praise you. I ask all this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by his precious blood. And everyone said amen. 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 You're welcome to be seated in the presence of God. I also want to remind everyone to be praying for the meeting we're about to have in March with Brother Tony Hudson. I forgot uh, to announce that. I don't know if there's still flyers for that. Um, Nikki's printer's up and running. She's going to get some printed. They'll be here. Looking very, very forward to that. Amen. Um, there ain't many like Brother Tony Hudson left in America. I'll just, yeah. I'll just tell you that. You say, well, I don't like, I don't like, he's kind of mean spirit and this and that. They've been saying that about preachers ever since the Lord Jesus Christ was preaching yeah. and even before him with the prophets. Yeah. You know what your problem is? It gets right in your wheelhouse yeah. and it cuts Preach. your feelings and it hurts you. Preach. And instead of getting on the altar and letting God do something with you and do something about it, you just blame the preacher. Yeah. 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 Amen? Amen. Now, I'm, I'm, I've said what I need to say there, but I'm looking forward to it, brother. Amen. Amen. If he get on anybody, I pray he gets on this preacher. Amen. 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 All right, and then well, three months, bam, we'll be right in camp meeting. So we're going to have some back to back stuff going on. Amen. That's good Praise for you. Fill out your time. Amen. Fill out your time. Make the year go by quicker and keep you closer to God. That's what we need in the hour Amen. that we live in today. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I told everyone he's wanting a coon hunt. So anybody that'd like to go along and, and walk around, I mean, Dad, I think about the only one left in here with dogs, but anybody that wants to go and visit and, and coon hunt, be in preparation. But it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So. Uh, you might have to go to work tired or what have you, maybe take a vacation that week, whatever you need to do to recuperate, but everyone's welcome to uh, partake and, and, and have a good time in that manner too. But uh, why don't we worry about showing up and having church first? Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to title this message for you this morning. I'm going to title it, You Need to Evacuate. Amen. Amen. You need to evacuate today. You say, oh, you're just preaching to the lost. No, I'm going to hammer on the save for a little bit too. This Amen. Morning. Amen. And uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, the reason this message, uh, God began to deal with this, uh, deal with me on this message is after the floods that had came through, uh, I always said Helen, but apparently the pronunciation is Helene, uh, that, that, that hurricane had come through and, and, and took a bunch of lives in North Carolina and affected people that we all know personally down there. Uh, I was talking to, to Brother DJ one time uh, after all that hit, and I said, did they not send out any kind of evacuation notice, or, or was, it, was it triggered too late by then? The water had already came in. Like, what was the story behind that? And I didn't mean anything ill behind that. I just, you know, I like to know the details of uh, what the government, you know, did they warn? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's not the way of the government to typically warn people. They usually like to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. But I asked him that, and he said, oh, no, they, 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 they sounded off an evacuation. But here's the thing, Bridger. He said, they do that all the time, but nothing ever comes of it. And right then, God smote my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And this ain't in any slight towards the people that went through that. I'm, I'm Spiritually, God smote yeah. my heart that yeah. morning yeah. and yeah. spoke to me. Because I don't yeah. think I'd be any different if I'd lived somewhere 40 years. And they always was warning, you need to get out, you need to get out, nothing ever. I'd probably stay in the comfort of my home too. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to preach this from a spiritual aspect today because he said that they, they always send them warnings out. They always do it. They're always telling people they need to evacuate, but they've heard it for so long and nothing ever comes of it that they just stayed right where they were at. Yeah. And I'm telling you, God, God, it may not do nothing for you today, but God smoked me right in the heart. And he said, there, there's a picture of mankind right there, preacher. Yeah. Myself and you included this Amen. morning. Yeah. That is a, that, that, that is everybody. And they're always getting warned, but nothing ever happens. So we just get comfortable with the warning. We get comfortable with the sounding of the alarm, with the crying aloud, with the preaching from behind the pole. We get comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then one day it's too late. Yeah. 
How many people, and I'm, I'm going off notes now or I'm steering away from it, but how many people you think sit in church services their whole life and woke up in hell one day? Yeah. Yeah. With a preacher screaming, crying aloud, warning, lifting up his voice yeah. and telling them if you don't get right today, you will die eventually and go into devil's hell. And how many people Preach you think it. sit and they heard that warning and they heard that warning and they heard that warning. You better evacuate. You better evacuate. Yeah. I got news for you today. It's like a fire alarm down there. You better stay out of it. You better evacuate. Amen. Preach. And they sat right there where they was at, and they got used to hearing the warning. And eventually, like the Bible teaches, their heart got hard. Yep. Maybe they got reprobate. Yep. You know what that is? God abandoning you and abandoning you in your sin. Yep. Yep. And they died and went to hell. So I want to preach on you need to evacuate. Another thing, after I, I had, I'd had this conversation, it wasn't a few days later, I happened to be on Facebook, and I seen, a, I believe it'd be a second cousin of mine, be my dad's first cousin. Uh, he had posted a picture where they, pictures where they had been at a, what was called the party in the pastor. Uh, Gary Allen uh, came out somewhere, not far, Greenfield area or something, and they had this big concert out there, and uh, that you, I was looking at the pictures, and he had these young boys with him. I don't even know if they're his kids or the, the lady he's married to his kids, but anyway, just a bunch of slobbering, drinking, fornicating going on. They're standing there. He's got the young boy next to him, and he's flipping the camera off, got a beer in his hand, and I'm sitting there, and it's just, it keeps, I just keep getting smitten, or, or smote in the heart. I keep getting just, my heart just trampled on thinking yeah. of the things that people will do today yeah. to their children yeah. and lead them to hell. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like everybody else. Let me say this. Let me say this. And I know there's some cases. I just had a conversation with someone yesterday uh, that had called that, that I had called or they called me. I don't remember. But and and, and they're gonna know. I'm, they're gonna know I'm talking about them here. But that's okay because they know what I'm fixing to say is true. Their their child is dealing with another child in a, in a very young grade in the school that already believes in evolution. Mm-hmm. Little kid, little kid already believe in evolution. You know who teaches that stuff? Not just schools, mamas and daddies. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a whole new era of wicked today, brethren. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You remember what the Bible said, just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's where we're at today. It ain't, it ain't just kids being rough and tough and bullying. and pit. Now you've got kids that are theologically in their mind believing things like evolution. Yeah. Yeah. And, and brethren, that's a problem. And so I see all this stuff and it takes place. And, and this message, you need to evacuate, you need to evacuate, you need to evacuate. And, and, and that's what I've been doing for the last 10, uh, going on 11 years, telling people it's time to evacuate. Yeah. And, and, and you say, what about the, the same people? I'm, I'm starting with you guys first. You guys get right at the front of the line. You take your lashes and you go sit down and then let the lost people deal with the yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All these people, and, and, and I said that story about the person I talked to to say this, because that, that it's possible that kid hasn't even... You, did, did it ever occur to you, and, and it didn't to me for a long time, but there's actually people in America today that have never heard about Jesus Christ? Yeah, yeah. that's right. See, we're spoiled and we're used to, you know, we grow up and we get to go to vacation, Bible school and this stuff. We have some, But there are actually people today that's never even heard the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Right here in our own country. Yeah. And maybe that's the case with that kid. They're hearing it now, praise God. But, but maybe that's the case with that kid. But what I'm saying is this much. For the most part, most people have been warned. Yeah. Yeah. Most people have been warned to flee from the wrath that's about to come. Yeah. Most people have at least to some extent or some degree been in a church service or heard about the Lord and heard about salvation. They've been warned, you better evacuate, you better get out of the direction you're headed. Most of them have. And you say, well, yeah, but here's the deal, preacher. I've heard that over and over and they've been saying, you know, I get up and preach on the second coming of Christ and you, you go witness to somebody. You tell them the Lord's coming back or the church is about to get raptured. What's the number one thing you usually hear from a godless sinner? They've been saying that for years. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that this morning, sitting at my desk, finishing my notes up and typing, writing some things out. And, and, and you know what God spoke to me? As, as soon as I, I wrote down that excuse, because I've heard it at least a dozen times, probably more, yeah. they've been saying that for years, preacher. And God said, yeah, you know what you ought to tell them? You're right. You better thank God. Yeah. That, Amen. You better Amen. thank God for His Amen. long suffering, Amen. His mercy, Amen. and His grace, Amen. because Amen. I'm telling you right now, one day, enough is enough. Yeah. And, and yeah. you're evacuated. You're stuck, brother. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah, buddy, well, I've been hearing that for years, preacher. Yeah, you ought to thank God you've been allowed to hear it for years. Amen. Preach. Yeah. I don't know about you, Brother Jeremy, but I thank God that God was long-suffering enough to continue that church age a little bit longer so that from 1987 on, at any given time, that Shane Hammonds could be born again and headed for heaven and not go to hell. I'm Amen. thankful that it ain't happened yet. Amen. Now, Amen. I'm ready for it to happen, but not selfishly. I'm ready to see the Lord. Yeah. Amen. But there's a lot of people in bad shape. Yeah. Yeah. 
And most of them has heard it, but you better thank God today for his patience. Amen. And his long suffering. Because, yeah. yeah. hey, let me tell you something. Even if you don't believe in God, you sit in your day and say, well, I don't really believe all this stuff, preacher. Well, I got bad. I got I got good and bad news for you. You better thank God that you still got a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because when your heart quits, when your body goes into the grave, you give up the ghost, there's something inside of you that's going to live forever. That's right. Right. Yep. So you better thank God at least you're getting to enjoy the filth of the world. If there's a, another way to put that, I don't know how, but you better at least thank God you're at least getting to do that. Even if you curse God and die and you're a filthy reprobate, you better at least think right now you're not in hell. That's right. Yeah. Because yep. one day, if you don't get saved, that's where you're going to be. Yeah. Amen. Preacher, they've been saying that for years. Here's my question. Have you looked around? Right. Preach. You're looking at a time we've never seen before yeah. in our generation, right. in our age. And anyone in here that's alive today, Brother Gary, my dad, anyone that's older than some of the people in here, I don't mean that in disrespect, but people that are, that are seasoned, that have been around a few years, they never, they'll tell you they didn't think they'd see what we see going on today. Right. Not, not, not with the sexual perversion of kids and things. They never would have dreamt that in a million years. Yep. 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 And so you don't give me that guess about well, they've been saying that for years. Yeah, now it's here. <laughs> time, yep. The time is it's high tide. It's here now, brethren. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a matter like Brother Tony says. It's not a matter of of, of, of wickedness and apostasy and the falling away will come. It has come. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. Now's yeah. the time, brethren. Amen. 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 I'm going to say it one more time. You need to evacuate. Yeah. Amen. You need to evacuate. I want to deal with saved people first. You saved people, you listen up this morning. I bet you're in need of evacuation today. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You say, I'm saved. I don't need to evacuate. And, oh, yeah, there's some evacuation that could probably take place. Yeah. Yep. Look, look you, 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 I'm not a great pastor, but I try to help you all out. I look up the definition of evacuate just to prove to you you probably need to evacuate. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to tell you something real quick about this definition. You know what it means to evacuate, to throw out? Yep. To void, yeah. to quit, Amen. to withdraw from a place, yeah. to Amen. empty, to free from contents. Amen. Preach. Preach. I don't need to evacuate nothing. You want to make a bet on that one? Yeah. I know we Christians, we ain't supposed to bet and all that. I get all that stuff, but you want to make a spiritual bet with me? I bet there's something in your life you need yeah. freed from. Yeah. Preach. Yeah. You say, not me, I'm holy and pious. Well, good for you. Go lie to everyone else, too. Yeah. Yeah. I bet there's everybody in here has got something that they need to evacuate out of their life. Yeah. It Man. could be just withdrawing from a place. Yeah. Man. But I'm willing to bet it could be more around the realms of to quit doing something you're not supposed to do, yep. Yep. to throw out something that you, yeah. you need to quit doing or Preach looking it. at or touching yeah. or being around. Yeah. i got I got a good feeling that I've dealt with people long enough. You don't tell me, I'll tell you. Preach. Yeah. Everybody under this roof today has got something they can evacuate right now. Preach. And you know in your heart of hearts it would make you closer to God. Yeah. Amen. You know that today and make you closer to God. Amen. Amen. Shane knows that. I get a, I get a hold, get something, something in my mind, and get to roll. And pretty soon, I can tell myself, just drifting away. So now I gotta get, I gotta evacuate that thing. Yeah. I gotta Amen. get rid of it. Amen. It's pulling me away from God. It's taking me away from God. Yeah. Yeah. Paul warned you about that time and time again in the Book of Romans. You gotta crucify the flesh. You gotta die to yourself. You gotta evacuate some things. Amen. Amen. And it goes from any little kid all the way up to the eldest of adults in here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm gonna tell you something about our young people, older people. I'd hate to be them in this generation. Yeah. That's right. Amen. You better learn some grace with these young'uns. Because yep. Yep. you don't know what it's like today. Amen? Amen. And I'm not excusing them doing wrong. I'm just telling you they're in a different realm than we ever could have dreamed of being in. Amen. Yeah. Yep. You got wickedness right at the palm of your hand today, brother. You got wickedness all around you everywhere you go. Stuff we never would have dreamed of. Yep. 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 But I'm going to tell you something, young people, that don't excuse you to go live in it either. Right. That don't give you permission to go and do it. Well, mom and dad didn't have to deal with it and they don't understand. So I'm going to, God can today. Preach. God can Amen. help you evacuate. Amen. God can help you today. The question is, do you want it? Amen. 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 You say, people, you need evacuation. I need to throw out some things. I need to avoid some things. I need to quit doing some things. I need to withdraw from a place. I need to empty some things out of my life. I need to free some of these contents out of my life. I need to get this stuff out. Amen. Amen. Can I help you this morning? Say, people, Noah found grace in verse 8. Y'all shout the house down on that one, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It feels yeah. good to find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Amen? No, I know. I'm a dispensationalist. This is back in the age of works. I get all that. But y'all know I'm painting a picture here for you. An illustration. Yeah. Yeah. He finds grace in verse 8. But then you jump down to 14 through 22 where we read. What's he say? I'll just read you verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. He found grace. 
Now it's time to what? Do something. Amen. Amen. Now I know you're not saved by your works. You're not. You're saved through faith, not of works. Lest I get all that. But if you're saved, you should be working. Preach. And when you find grace, when someone as good as God and as big as God and as loving as God sends His Son to die for you, and you receive the gift of eternal life, and He makes you a new creature, and He circumcises you spiritually, you should want to do something for God. Amen. And so here's what I'm going to say about that. You're supposed to work. Amen. I don't know if you, this I heard, but you're supposed to work. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All you over there, if you're saved, you're supposed to work for the Lord. Amen. And everyone in between, you're supposed to do something for the Lord. Right. Verse 5, chapter 7, verse 5. You, you, did you read that? Oh, we didn't read that one. Let me read it. Verse 7. <coughs> or chapter 7, verse 5. I'm sorry. And you read it even in 22. Let me read you 22 in chapter 6 verse. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Now jump into, into chapter 7. Verse 5, and Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Yeah. Now listen, I'll level with you. you, we, you I know all couldn't be said of us. Right. Y'all spiritual now? No. You telling me every time you picked up that book and God said you do this or you need to do that, you did every bit of it according unto all of it? No. no. And if you did, you get up this pulpit and you take over this church right now. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's wake up today. You ever do all God commanded you to do? No. no. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm leveling with you. I'm, being a, I'm going to be a generous preacher today. I know all couldn't be said of us, but we've been told to work. Yeah. Amen. Been told to do something. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know what it said over there? Brother Dwayne, 2 Peter 2 5, it said Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Right. Amen. Brethren, I don't claim to know everything about the Bible, but there's plenty of times that I get stumped in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I got to thinking about this, this preacher righteous, and maybe it's just shame being dumb, but I get hung up on stuff sometimes, and I'm sitting there thinking, preacher righteousness, when in the world did he preach? Because he just built, you, you know, Brother Gary, anybody in here, you go back and read the text, Noah's instructions, not one time did God tell him to go preach. Right. He didn't. That's right. Don't everybody get all freaked out. It's not in there. I've looked at it every which way, even sideways, and he didn't say you go preach to all them people out there. Right. But then Peter says he's a preacher of righteousness. And so and I'm thinking in my brain, is he preaching before he finds grace in the eyes of the Lord? Or is he preaching while he's building the ark? Or which is it? And, 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 and you can't prove that this is what happened or what is or what ain't, but I, I can't either. So I'm going to give you what Shane thinks about it. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm a preacher. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Not much of one. Don't everybody shout at all the same time. But, but I'm a preacher. Yeah. You remember over there in Jeremiah when he got mad and he said, Lord, I ain't going to speak your name anymore. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. He said, I ain't going to talk about it. I ain't going to preach no more. I'm done. But he said he tried to do that and it was like fire shut up in his bones and he couldn't stay. He, yeah. he had to yeah. say something. Yeah. So Amen. putting all this into perspective for me, at least in my simpleton thinking, I think Noah did it before and during the building of the ark. Because yeah. yeah. if you're a preacher, you're supposed to preach in season, out of season. That's right. Amen. You don't, it don't make a flint when it is. You're supposed to do it. Amen. I can't prove one way or the other. But I, didn't, I mean, you do notice reading the text that God said, here's who's going to get on the ark with you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's God's foreknowledge. Yeah. Got nothing to do with Calvinism. Because Noah was a preacher, right? So Calvin should have went back and told Noah a thing or two because apparently Noah preached to everybody. Yep. Amen? Yeah. So listen to me. He, he found grace. Then he was told to work. But I know all couldn't be said of us, but we've been told to work. Noah's a preacher of righteousness. When was he preaching? I say both sides. Yeah. I say he preached. He was already trying to tell people about the Lord, and that was one of the reasons he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And if he was a believer in the Lord and he believed the judgment that was coming, if he's a good preacher, if he's a man that he should have been for God, he'd have told him while he was building. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Just, listen to me. This ain't in my notes. I'm going to be free. Just him building the boat was preaching. Amen. 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 You know what he's telling people? I believe God. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm working. And what I'm building is judgment is coming and this will get you out of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But still, nonetheless, he's a preacher of righteousness. Sort of like this, brethren. I wonder this. Y'all know I got an imagination. Sorry, I didn't grow up behind a video game all the time. I got an imagination. But I, I like to wonder if Noah preached off the ark. Like while he's building it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I like to know. I, I like to I like to think back and picture Noah and he's out there building and he gets a little bit of he gets a little bit of a a, 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 a platform built up, and I'm gonna illustrate. And he stands on that thing and starts preaching. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Brother Mike, I don't know why, but God helped my soul. I about had a Pentecostal fit back there this morning. 
God said, if he did that, because he didn't give me confirmation, I'm just using my imagination. You think about this, preacher. If he if he stood on the thing, on the ark and preached, he was standing on the thing that saved yeah. him. Yeah. Preaching Amen. about yeah. what could save him. Preach. Yeah. Brethren, I ain't been doing this very long. But I know without standing on him, yeah, I can't right. preach nothing. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Help somebody. Help somebody. I'm telling you this morning. He's standing on the very thing that saved him. Amen. Preaching to them preach. about it being able to save them. Amen. All you preachers are maybe called to preach. Listen up. You're going to get anywhere with God. You're going to get anywhere in mission. You have to stand on Christ. Amen. Amen. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Amen. All other ground around that thing and anywhere else in any part of the country, any part of the world, sink and sink. Yeah. Amen. 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 He stand, I, and I can't prove he was, but you can't prove he wasn't, so nana boo boo. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I just picture him standing up there on the thing that's going to save him, preaching about that thing being able to save them. Yeah. Amen. That's a, that's a preacher there. That's what they should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. You get a preacher gets up on a pulpit and won't say nothing about the Lord, I'd get rid of him. Amen. 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 What's he doing up there? What are you talking about? Why are you behind the pulpit? Yep. Amen. Amen. I know this much. I know in whom I have trusted today. Amen. 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 And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. There was a preacher of righteousness. When, he's, when, did he, when was he preaching? I say all the time. Yeah. If he's a good preacher and Noah finding grace in the eyes of the Lord, when all the world has gone to hell and they're corrupt and wicked and violent, and one man finds grace, I'd say he's preaching all the time. Amen. 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 Yep. Preacher of righteousness. Christ the solid rock I stand. King David said he took my feet out of the miry clay and set me upon the rock. Yep. Amen. Amen. You know, God saved you. He took you out of some stuff. Amen. Amen. Then when you get saved, sometimes you get kind of drifty. Yep. Yep. And God says, hey, you need to know that. You wait that, son. You need to get rid of that. Yep. You got to get rid of that thing. Yep. Why? Why? Because it's taking you away from me. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in here has got a parent. You know you can be as close to that parent as you want, or you can be as far away from it as you want. Yep. But at the end of the day, you know where you're better off, and that's right up close to them. Yep. Yep. Amen. Because they're your protector. They're your provider. Yep. Amen. 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 Sort of like this, Brother Dwayne. You know one of my favorite texts in the entire Bible? It's over in the book of Nehemiah. You know what Nehemiah is? You know what they're doing in Nehemiah, don't you? Somebody help me. They're building a wall. That's before Trump ever even thought of it. They're rebuilding. Amen? Amen. You get over in Nehemiah chapter 4, one of my favorite places, and, and I, I paraphrase it here, but they which build it on the wall, everyone it says, they which build it on the wall, everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand he held a weapon. Yeah. I don't know why every time I read that I get the Holy Ghost feel all over me and it just almost sends conviction in my heart because you're supposed to be working with one hand and using your weapon with the other constantly. Right. Yeah. Amen. King James 1611 Bible. Yeah. Amen. It's your sword. Amen. Amen. It's your sword. Yeah. Yeah. And then you work for the Lord with the other hand. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's one of my favorite texts in the entire Bible. Everyone that built on the wall, the wall he worked with one hand brought in to work and with the other hand he held a weapon. Amen. Now, did I tell you this yet? I don't remember. We're supposed to work. Amen. 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 I wasn't trying to be me when I give announcements, but some of y'all would be good for you to get in and do something. Amen. Yeah. Amen. While we're gone, pick up the slack. Yeah. Hi, amen. Yeah. Amen. Especially anyone, I don't know anyone doing this, but if you're in here and you run your mouth about the people that do do this stuff in the church, why don't you be the first one on the list? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You jump in there with them kids and wrangle them up and try to teach them something. Amen. Yeah. To give you a taste of it. Yeah. It ain't as easy as it looks, Jack. I think the adults are rough sometimes, but I can show you them kids. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Amen? You ever try to keep the attention of a kid in this generation? Amen. That's used to a phone to entertain them or a video game or something? You ever try to keep a kid's attention like that? Yeah. With an old archaic book that nobody wants nothing to do with anymore? Yeah. Sign up. Get involved. Amen. Amen. If you can do it better, jump in and show me, and we'll throw you in a position next week when I get back. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So listen to me this morning. They worked with one hand and they held a weapon with the other. I think it's high time that we work with one hand, we hold our Bible in the other, and we're always ready for the fight. We're always ready for the war. But if the war ain't coming, if we're kind of living that, you know, you do get some times of rest in your Christian walk. Yeah. You know what you do? You keep working. Yeah. Amen. Keep working with the other hand. Amen? Right. Amen. Did I tell you you're supposed to work today? Amen. <clears throat> That's not in the original Greek, but you're supposed to work today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm saved. Preacher, now what? Work. Amen. Find Amen. something to do. Yeah. 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 Why, preacher? Because if you sit around and don't do nothing, the devil will give you things to do. That's right. yeah. And That's then right. you'll drift further and further from God. Yeah. Yeah. You'll end up, I know Baptists, God, God help us, you hate this word, but you'll end up backslid. Yeah. You'll end up just uh, just put up on the shelf, a nobody for God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that to be said about me, you want it to be said about you. No. 
you, you want to be the people, and I hear this about people today. Well, I remember when so and so used to be on fire. Yeah. I remember when so and so used to not miss a church service. I remember when so and so used to go out and witness. I remember when so and so used to. Man, remember yeah. how much knowledge they were starting to get in their Bible? Yeah. yeah. And now when you get around them and talk, they talk like the world. Yeah. yeah. You want that to be said of you? I, you know what I do? I'd ride into work with one hand. I'd carry my weapon in the other. Amen. That's what I'd do. Amen. Amen. You know what you might need to do to, to accomplish that? Evacuate some things. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Did I, did I tell you guys you're supposed to work? Amen. Okay. Make sure. Sometimes my mind, my mind, well, you're supposed to work. Amen. Amen. If a man will not work, he should not eat, the Bible says. Right. Yeah. Right. Now you're talking physically, yeah, you should work a job if you're a man. But listen to me. That, that applies spiritually. Yeah. You want to get fed as a Christian? You're going to get out of. You're going to get out of it exactly what you put into it. That's right. Amen. You get the people that, that always have got the problems with the church and this and that. Most of them ain't doing nothing. Yep. It's because they won't work. And God said, "All right, you won't eat." Right. Amen. 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 I know my sermons already are dull enough as it is, but when you're back sit on God yourself, it's going to be a lot drier. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Be dry as cracker juice, brother. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Can I help you this morning? You're supposed to work. Right. Do you do you realize this? Hold on, I got to backtrack here real quick. You realize what Noah was building? A structure. Yep. Yep. I want you to follow me this morning. Was he building a structure or was he not? Yep. Yes. Yep. Amen? Amen. Amen. This structure was a place of refuge. Amen. Right? Yep. Yep. A place where people got on they could sort of congregate. Yep. That's right. Yep. Amen? Amen. Yep. Yep. Now listen, I know this is just a building and we are the body of Christ. I got enough theology to know that. So don't even think about this ability. Just think about building the body of Christ. Do, do you realize today that he's building a structure where people can come in and congregate and God's been good to us. He's given us a building we can come in and congregate. Amen. 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 And this is a place as far as I'm concerned of refuge. Amen. Amen. You may not get nothing out of this place, but I look forward to coming to this place more than Amen. any other thing Amen. the rest of the week. Amen. Even when I'm in a bad mood, even when I'm ticked off, even when I'm depressed, yeah. upset, Preach. whatever it is, I, I always think in my mind, man, I can't wait to get to church. Preach. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't understand people that don't think like that. Yep. Oh, I do. It's because they've been feeding the flesh. Right. Yep. Oh, man, I can't wait to get back to feeding my flesh. Amen. Now, that's that, that's that normal physical hunger I deal with all the time that never seems to end yep. in my gut. Yep. The flesh is just like that. Never satisfied. Right. Never satisfied. Right. Never satisfied. I come in here, brethren, and I get full. I get filled up. Amen. But I'm still just a little bit hungry enough to want to come back and eat next Amen. Time. Amen. 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 He's building a structure, a place people can come congregate, and it's a place of refuge, a place where people can, can it's a refuge. People can still go in the ark and they can be saved. Amen. Amen. Brother Gary, you want to see souls saved? I'm with you. People can still come in here and get saved. Amen. 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 What's it going to take, preacher? You have to build it. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about boards and nails. I'm talking about being involved. That's right. Amen. I'm talking about doing something. Yeah. Amen. 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 Even if it ain't inside the walls, you can build this church. Even That's if you're right. not in it, you can right. build it. Yeah. Yeah. You can build it with gospel tracks. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can build it at Dollar General, Sister Katie. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yep. Say, so why are you always bring it up? Because it was a it was a big turning point for our church. Amen. Amen. Yep. That's when we got some more people in it. They all got saved, and it seemed like ever since then, God just been all over this thing. Yep. Amen. Yep. Yep. Sean, it's not because you're the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> But it was just one of them places for me as a pastor. It seemed like a big shifting point for the church. Yeah. And it felt like God just been growing. Look in here this morning. We got a few empty seats out here, but there's people sitting blowing in the back. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't from my preaching, Brother Gary's preaching, Jeremy's teaching, preaching, Charlie's teaching. It ain't from none of that. That's right. Yep. It's from people that were willing to be in a, a line at a Dollar General, which is a little bit of a slice of heaven on earth. I'll give you that. Dollar General's a good place. <laughs> I seen that meme said Northern Lights, and then it said Southern Lights, and it was a Dollar General. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> But you can build a church real easy. Yeah. Might just take a little vocabulary. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Even being from this part of Missouri, you can still use that vocabulary and win people. Yeah. 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 Here's what I thought. Because he said he did all that the Lord had commanded him. And then when you read that text in Nehemiah, it says all, everyone, everyone. That there wasn't a Baptist church here at this time, I can assure you. <laughs> everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and that with the other hand held a weapon. Right. Yeah. Amen. So here I am, using my imagination. Now I want you to imagine this morning if everybody got involved. Amen. Amen. You understand how dangerous it'd be, it'd be yeah. dangerous right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 You understand that the fact that we'd have to be looking for some land and a building or a way to add yeah. on to this one? Yeah. 
Y'all yeah. yeah. ain't meant that, but I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone worked, it would be dangerous in this joint. Right. Yeah. For a good way. Yep. Amen. Amen. If everybody said, hey, preacher, I don't care. I, I don't know what I can do, but here's a piece of trash on the floor. I'm going to pick it up. You know God will bless that. Amen. 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 God will. Y'all think I'm crazy now. You think I don't want break lock? I'm telling you, anybody that will do something for God, he'll, he'll take care of you. That's right. Amen. And when he sees that we're doing it to glorify the body of Christ and we're doing it to try to, to, to help the church, he'll grow the church. Amen. Amen. I know how that thing works. I've been around enough. I know how it works. Amen. Amen. If you want to see the church grow real slow and at the least fast possible pace, pace possible, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. But don't sit back there and say, well, you know, we've had that preacher for 10 years and that church ain't hardly grown. Bull. Amen. Yep. Amen. Maybe it's because you've sat out in the pew for 10 years and you ain't hardly grown. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen and amen and amen. Yeah. Now, I'm being nice to you, but just imagine, just use your brain this morning and go off into the wonderland with me and imagine this. Imagine if everybody, if everybody that, that, that we, we built, imagine the building, the church body we could build if everyone got on board. Yeah. Amen. Imagine it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you were in here wanting to work every time the doors were open, you were in here wanting to do something, you wouldn't have time to even get mad or nitpick anything about the church. Right. You'd be so busy trying to witness this person, win that person, and help over here and clean this and mess and mess with this, whatever you need to, you wouldn't have time to complain. Right. Right. Idle hands. Yep. Hey, Amen. Right. Right. Let me and I want to level with you guys here. I want to I want to level with you guys. Just a little bit here. He's he's built this structure, hey, amen. Amen. Yep. Can I give you one more shout and fit before I finish the message? Preach. Amen. He's building this structure. No, I'm, I'm back to Noah now. He's building this structure. Can I tell you one day that structure was going to float up? Yeah, yeah. It's going to take off. Amen. 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 God spoke that one to me for three ninety nine sitting back there when yeah. I was sitting up my notes. Amen. Amen. One day that, that structure was going to float up and it was going to take off out of there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Me, me too. Amen. And then I can relate to that. One day I'm going to float up. Praise say, brother. That's going to be a lot of a lot of lifting to get you up. Yeah, it is. But the Lord can do it today. Amen. 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 I'm going to float up and I'm out of here. Amen. Amen. But imagine if everybody helped build it today. Imagine everybody helped build it. Imagine, imagine if it was like this. And, and I'm using this because this is our number one problem most yeah. of us. Yeah. Yep. How many hours do you think one of them things consumes of your time a week? Too many. Too many. Yeah. I don't want to know. You say, well, preacher, I'm listening to preaching. I'll give you that. I do that a lot. But not on my phone. It's usually on my computer or my TV. Most of this is for what we call scrolling. Yep. Yep. Amen? Yep. Amen? And you say, well, I'm just trying to keep up with current events. That's fine. But do them current events outweigh the amount of time you try to keep up with the Lord? Amen. Amen. So listen to me. Imagine Noah. I want you to put Noah in your head. Now, now imagine him. Noah, just, just imagine this is Noah. The Lord gives him a warning that he's got to build an ark. And here he's sitting in his easy chair scrolling through Facebook. Mm -hmm. See, you laugh because you know the end of this story. But I don't think it's funny because we don't know the end of our story in terms of what we could have done or what we should have done until we get to the judgment seat. Yeah. But can I tell you, there's probably going to be some times the Lord's going to take my mind down there at the judgment seat and He's going to show me where I sit on that stupid thing. Yeah. Preach. And He said there was work to do, there was work to do, there was work to do, there was work to do. And yet you found more enjoyment in Facebook. Preach. Or TikTok. Preach. I'll hit all the idols this morning, or Instagram, or, or Pinterest, whatever the crap is that you're watching. You don't think the Lord ain't going to have something to say about that? Amen. Preach. Amen. Guilty as charged. Yeah, amen. amen. You say, preacher, we can't just be full-blown all the time, wide open for the Lord. No, but we should try. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's work to be done. You know, while I'm looking at reels, people are going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You say, what do you, why do you say all this stuff? Because we just got a, 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 a $4,500 bus. Yeah. 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 You're going to get involved in trying to get people on it, or are you going to sit at home and scroll through Facebook all the time? Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Or are you just going to rely on a few people to handle it and you come in and soak up the blessings? That's right. right. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't die there. It's okay. Yeah. We've got an altar here. You can come up here and you can let God get your feelings straightened out. But it's a reality. Right. Yeah. You're going to let a few people do it and you just get to come in and, yep, my church is the greatest and we've got this and we've got that. Well, you ain't done nothing but sit back and talk and scroll on Facebook all during the services or anytime you're supposed to do. Is that going to be you today? Preach. Preach. Brother Charlie was writing his devotion. Yep. Yeah. Every time we gather, and pray, we need to be serious about it. Amen. Amen. I, I, I felt the Lord deal with me about that here a while back, all the talking during the nursing home service. I'm thinking, man, we got we got to be quiet. There's preaching taking place. Yep. Yep. Some of y'all don't know that because like Charlie said, you don't go. Yep. 
But it is what it is. That's just always going to be the work of God. Yeah. Some will get in, some won't. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with preaching for it, brother. I'm all for it. Right. Amen. Amen. Lift up your voice and tell them. That's all you can do. But I'm just telling you right now. Imagine if no one would just sit back in his easy chair and scroll through Facebook when he knew judgment was coming. Yep. He'd be in rough shape. Yep. Amen. He went downstream, brother. Yep. No, you know what he did? He had to evacuate. Yep. Now, I know this about people. In the time I've been doing this, I found this out. In order for a man or a woman to work and do all the Lord commanded them to do and to serve God with any type of, 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 of seriousness, with zeal, you had to evacuate some things. Amen. Yep. Yep. Had to. Yep. You ain't going to serve God like Noah did unless you evacuated some things. Yep. Right. Amen. You say, well, they didn't have all that technology. Then, eh, you, you might be surprised if you did a little studying. Yep. They had plenty of things to occupy them back then. Right. Yep. 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 Amen. 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 Everyone in here has seen the pyramids. Everyone in here knows about the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I, I know you've been taught that, that back then it was cavemen and they were stupid. Well, look pretty intelligent to me. Amen. There was wicked stuff around to keep them occupied. Yep. Don't you worry about that. Amen. 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 But you listen to me in order for Noah to be finding grace in the eyes of the Lord, and in order for Noah to do everything God commanded him to do, and in order for him to walk upright and be just and perfect in his way, he had to evacuate some stuff. Amen. You know what it's going to take for Shane to do what God wants him to do, and to do it right, and to do it with any kind of, of, of genuine service and, and execute it like it needs to be done? I'm going to have to evacuate some things. Amen. I might have to throw the cell phone out and say, you know what? I don't need to look at that anymore. I need to put that down. Even if it's innocent stuff, it don't matter. Right now. At the end of the day, if it's taking you away from the work of God, it's become a God to you. That's right. Yeah. Amen. 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 I get on reels. How many of you, be honest, you get on reels? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't tell me it's just preaching. The devil ain't stupid. That's right. If you're a preacher looking at reels, he'll know what to throw in your face. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, I just watch these clips. Up. I guarantee you, most of them probably ain't even fit to listen to preach anyway. And number two, I guarantee you there's an ad or something at the bottom of that that catches your attention. You think, what is that? Yeah. That's the devil. Come on, guys. We know yeah. how the devil works. Help me out today. Yeah. If, it's, if it's hurting your feelings, and it just you, you can come get it right today. Amen. But be, at least don't tell. I know I'm stupid, but don't take me for a complete idiot. Yeah. Yeah. When you watch reels, it ain't all preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, I see some hilarious stuff sometimes on the Internet. I'm aware there's funny stuff out there. I sent one brother Gary and Dwayne this morning, and his husband and wife had, had, were out exploring. They were looking for a campsite, and his wife said, this is the perfect place right here because it has taken all of the words out of my mouth. And he said, we're setting up camp here. <laughs> That's funny. But you know what you get for every one clean, funny thing? You find ten more, some whore, yeah. Yeah. some harlot. Yeah. Right. Ladies, I don't know what you find attractive in men. God help you, but I'm sure the devil throws stuff your way. Yeah. yeah, amen. Probably a purse or something. <laughs> Please, God, don't tell me it's a man. you never seen a good-looking man in my life. Amen. 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 But the devil knows what to throw at you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to learn to evacuate that crap. Right. Yeah. You've got to learn to throw it out. Get rid of it. Make it void. Cut ties with it. Amen. amen. You know what you got to come up with in your mind? you got to find decide, I want what God has, and I want the power of God, and I want to do the work of God. With I want that more than anything this world yeah. has to offer. Amen. Right. Amen. That's every backslidden Joe and Sam and Tommy and, and Sal. Every one of them, that's their problem. That's why they're right. backslidden. Yep. They want what the world's got more than what God's got. Amen. Amen. So be honest with yourself today. As the same person, I'm going to pick on the lost people for about two minutes this morning. What is it I need to evacuate in my life? Just because you're saved and God has taken you, you're, you're sealed, just because you're going to heaven don't mean you don't need to evacuate anything right. anymore. Right. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Right. So you got to learn how to remove yourself from places like the definition of that. If something starts getting a little bit hairy or a little bit bad and a little bit wicked in a situation you're in, you need to remove yourself from the place. Yep. Yep. Let people ask me that. How long do you stay in a situation or in a room with people and witness uh, until you feel like the Spirit of God says, hey, hey, bud, you can't take any more of this. Yep. Yep. Like it's starting to pull you down and get out. Yep. Yep. You say, I'm just letting people go to help. God's in control. You get in there. If, if God's allowed you, and I'd be, I'd be hard pressed to find a lot of these situations in a few, but if God has allowed you to get around a couple of lost buddies and give you an opportunity to witness, you witness and speak what needs to be said, and you take your stand. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. if you're really doing what you need to do as a Christian, you'll find that they'll probably more than likely evacuate themselves from you. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 You, you bring the Lord out in most situations out here in the world today, that people won't hang around you very long. Right. Yeah. You'll lose invites and texts and calls. Yep. Yeah. You're just a little bit too spiritual for them. Yeah. I, 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 dealt, I just, just dealt with this. 
Someone in my family went through something traumatic. I've always been the fanatic, the one that takes religion too serious, and blah, 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 blah. And as soon as chaos, pray for so and so. Yep. Oh, now I'm not too fanatical for you. Yep. Yeah, you're about too dumb for help. Amen. Amen. If I thought I was too fanatical and I was too extreme and I was this and I was that, I wouldn't call me for prayers. Right. Yep. Amen. Amen. Now, can I finish with the lost people? You lost people? I shouldn't have to tell you this, but if you're here today and you're not saved, you need to evacuate. Yeah. yeah. You stay with preacher right now. Yeah. Amen. I can already smell the smoke. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You're already damned, the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. As, far as, I concern, as far as I'm concerned with Scripture, you, you, if, if we had spiritual eyes, you could see the smoke coming off you. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know what you lost people are like? You're like John Phillips. You say, who's that? Well, I did a little reading this morning on a guy by the name of John Phillips. The guy didn't write the book. I was reading about a man named John Phillips. It wasn't a book. I was doing some different searches of things. And John Phillips was the wireless telegraphist on the Titanic. That's a lot of you lost people. If you're here today and you're lost, that's you. You're John Phillips. Say, why is that? I learned that they, they, they found that he had, he, John Phillips, the day of the Titanic and Son, he had already passed along somewhere around two dozen ice warnings. The day of the, the sinking of the Titanic. The warnings were going out, yep. and, and he was just passing them along. It, that, that preaches 15 different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you lost people, like the warning comes and you try to find someone else to relay the message to. Yeah. I ain't talking about me. I'm a good person. No, you're, you're the problem. Yeah. You need to get saved. Right. Amen? Amen? But look at it from this aspect. John Phillips, he'd already handled two dozen ice warnings, so he had been warned. I don't know about you, but if I'm on a big ship and they're saying there's ice out there that can sink the ship in the middle of that ocean... I'm going to probably try to evacuate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to sound the alarm and say, hey, y'all hang out here if you want, but I'm going out the door. Amen. There's a hundred and however many lifeboats out here. I'm going to lower one down. Anyone that can fit in with me, let's go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But here he's been warned. That's the stupidity of mankind. That's right. He's been warned, hey, the ice is, it, it's out there. No, I'll just hang out on the boat. Yeah, you like, you like John Phillips. He had handled as many as two dozen ice warnings. Last one coming through. They said the last one that went through to John Phillips, he said these words, shut up, shut up, I'm busy. Oh. That's every God-forsaken law center I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is coming, shut up, I'm busy. Yeah. I got a job, I got kids, I got sports, I got money to make, I got yeah. entertainment, I got shut up, I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. Every lost center I ever come in contact with, I'm busy. Yeah. Kind of that, that Felix or that Agrippa type yeah. of stuff, you yeah. know, when I have a convenient season or almost you persuade yeah. me to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Every lost sinner you come into contact very rarely do you meet a, a, a sinner one time and say something about getting saved and they hit their knees and they call on God to save them. Very rarely. Yeah. Yeah. Usually get the runaround. Yeah. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. Kind of like what I talked about at the beginning. Well, they've been, you've been, people have been preaching that for, for years, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they're saying? Shut up. I'm busy. I don't believe it. I don't buy it anymore. That, that's a lot of, if you're in here and you're lost, you just like John Phillips. Right. Yeah. You say, I ain't had two dozen warnings. Well, you had one. Yeah. Yeah. You've had one. Yeah. I ain't going to lie to you. Can, can I give you a couple more illustrations? I'll be done. Uh, here's one I read the other day. California, it touches the North Pacific Ocean, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's completely touching it on the, on the west side of the state. Yeah. It's a big body of water. And yet, they've got more wildfires out there. It touches that big body of water, and it can't ever get any relief from the fires. Right. Yep. Amen? Amen. Amen? Here we are in America, church on every corner. Yep. People live real close to the churches, but they don't ever find the relief That's in the church. Right. Yeah. Ever. If you're here today and you're lost, you are in the greatest situation you'll ever be in in your life. Amen. You are headed for a place of fire and torment and hell and, and, and torture forever and ever and ever and ever. Yep. Preach. Yeah. And God so saw, saw fit in his sovereignty, I'm not preaching Calvinism, but in his sovereignty, yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 to allow you to sit in a church house on a Sunday morning Amen. Yeah. Amen. and hear that Jesus Christ can save you. Amen. Amen. Hear that, to hear that you need to evacuate. Don't give me this malarkey about God's a bad God and he's a mean God. If you're sitting here today, I just close my mouth on that thing. Yeah. Yep. You're sitting here right now. People live close to the church and they never find its relief. Yeah. You know what I thought about after I read that? You reckon people were close to the ark? Yep. Yeah. There's a picture of it on this. I was looking at this morning. Uh, right here on top of Mount Ararat. It is roughly 550 feet long, about 90 feet wide and 50 foot high. Rough estimate. I mean, somewhere in that general park. You think anybody ever got close to that thing and seen it? You, you reckon any, anybody ever passed by and seen a boat that big? Yeah. How many feet long did I tell you? 
Right there. 500, over 500 foot long. You the, you understand the, the how long that is, right? Yeah. In country, that's a long ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's a long shot with a deer rifle. Yeah. You think anybody ever seen it? Yeah. They knew it was there. Yeah. They knew it was there. No, it was a, pre, no, it was a preacher, preacher of righteousness. He told them. And not only is he telling them, but they're seeing what he's building. And don't you know they thought he had lost his, his, his mind? Yeah. But there it was, right within reach. Yeah. And never got on. You think they ever got close to it? I think I think they got real close to it. I know this about people. You stand up for God in a wicked and godless time, people will get close just to mock and laugh and yeah, scorn. Yeah. You don't think people that walk by and say, no, you idiot. You believe you believe that old archaic word from God that told you rain was coming? We ain't never seen a drop of rain, never even heard of rain. Right. What are you talking about? Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. I know how people are. They come by and they mocked and they scorned him. Yep. Yeah. And they never got on. The lost... I want to tell you this this morning. If you're lost, I'm finishing with this. If you're lost in here this morning and you're not saved, I want you to notice something about the story. All that had to be done to find refuge was to get on. Yeah. Noah, Noah wasn't charging admission at the gate. Amen. $8 for adults and four fifty for kids. Well, that ain't how it worked. Right. Amen. Amen. He wasn't charging money. He didn't have to bring money to get on the ark. Noah also wasn't checking their background and their criminal history. Right. Somebody better help me Come this on. morning. Preach. I'd have been checking backgrounds and he'd have been checking criminal Preach. history. Some of y'all wouldn't have got in. Amen. Amen. But he saved you just like you are right Amen. where you are. No matter how many sins you committed and how wicked and godly and yeah. godly they were, yeah. he saved you. Amen. 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 All you had to do was get in the ark, man. Get in the ark. Amen. He wasn't taking fingerprints and sending them into the FBI for a background check. Didn't work like that. You know what it was? All you had to do was get on. Amen. Amen. Had to heed the warning. Can I tell you, judgment's coming. Amen. Amen. I love America. I think it's the greatest nation you can live in. Yep. Yep. I wouldn't trade it for any communist, godless, wicked other country on the face of this earth. Right. But can I tell you, you don't do what America does and continue to do what America's been doing right. and you stay good. That's right. Amen. 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 And I don't mean that disrespect towards veterans. It bothers me that veterans have fought and bled for a country and for the freedoms we have just to watch them go down the toilet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, well, it takes me out to preacher. Well, why don't you get spiritual for a minute and think how it makes God feel when he shed his blood? That's right. Right. And you do what you do. Amen. Yeah. So sometimes people a little bit, and, and listen to me, don't take this wrong. Sometimes people, they get a little bit more on that patriot side than they worry about God. Yeah. And I ain't interested in that stuff. Amen. I'm a saved child of God first. Amen. American second. Amen. And if America turns her back on Israel, count me out. I'm going to try to evacuate. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> if he ain't raptured us yet and, and things start unfolding, I'm, uh, you, you can find me hiding somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'll preach where I can. We'll run underground. We'll do what we have to do. I'm, I know the rapture is going to come before that, so I ain't trying to twist your theology up this morning. But listen to me. When America turns us back on Israel, she had it. Yeah. Yep. When America kills babies like it has been for all these years, she's had it. Yeah. Yep. You cannot forsake God and prosper as a nation. It don't happen. Everybody says, well, I think Trump's going to do it. I think Trump might help a few things, but you ain't getting it back. That's right. It's not coming back, brethren. Prophetically, scripturally, it doesn't come back. You don't spit in the face of God, and God raised you up and blessed you. That's right. It don't happen. He said, well, Trump will do that. No, Trump's a Catholic, a Jesuit. So is his boy. Amen. And that's the whore of Babylon church. You think God's going to bless something like that? Amen, amen and amen. He might, he might lower your bill at Dollar General. That will be fine by me. But I'm not looking forward to that. I'm not looking and interested in that. I'm interested in the calling out of the church. Yep. Amen. Amen. And I'm interested in while we're waiting on the church to be called out to build one. Amen. amen. We're about to leave for a week. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all be happy. You ain't got to hear me next Sunday. But we're about to leave for a week. I'm going out there, so maybe God will give me something. Amen. Not that I don't get it here, but I'm going somewhere else, and I'm going to learn some things about the buses. I'm going to learn some things about this, and I'm going to get the fire preached out of me. Amen. You know, try to come back and pour that to you. What are you going to do that week while we're gone? You're going to jump in and get serious and serve and help build? Amen. Amen. You say, well, preacher, I'm tired and my back hurts. Now get in line, brethren. Yeah. I'm, I, listen to me. I'm, I'm a very compassionate man. I know that's hard to believe. If you're going through something, I've got compassion for you. I just get sick of excuses. Yeah. Because at some point, God's got to be bigger than the excuse. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, it's got to be God can. Amen. 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 I'm not saying I got it as bad as everybody else, but I deal with stuff. Everybody in here deals with stuff. That's just life. Yeah. But at some point, God's got to be bigger. Amen. Amen. And I'm just telling you, when you make excuses and you get caught lying 47 times around them, that's why I lose compassion a lot of times. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
Like I told you last night, just say, look, I'm, I'm a lazy reprobate today. I'm, I'm just not in it. Yep, yep. I appreciate that much more. Hey, man. But I'm just telling you, we're about to be gone for a week. There's a lot of work that can be done while we're gone. Yeah. Amen. 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 And pray for God to give us a good meeting out there and learn something about the buses we never would have learned had we not went out there. Amen. Right. Pray for God to show that and pray that when we get back, we get fired up and we get all these, this bus out here filled and if it's God's will, we have to buy another one within yeah. six months. Amen. But we got to fill it. Pray for that stuff. Yeah. Amen. But I'm going to say one more time as we stand, if everyone will work like they did in Nehemiah, it'll be a quicker process to build it. Yeah. Amen. You telling me if 10 people build versus 50 people that the 10 is going to be better off and they're going to get it done quicker? Ain't going to happen. Many hands make life work. Amen. What do you got to evacuate today? What do you need to evacuate in your life? You say, preacher, I've been on some, some shady situations. I've been in some bad places. I've been around some bad people. I've been around some bad things. I need to evacuate them. Come up here and ask God. Say, Lord, I need out of there. I want out. I want to cut ties. I want it away from me. I want you to help me with my mind, my, my, my struggles. I want you to help me with all that stuff. And he can do it today. He can most certainly do it today. I would encourage you this week to pray. Ask God to help. Ask God to give me some wisdom when I'm out there to teach me some things, other things I didn't know. Ask for that. And then also, Lord, where do you need me at there? What do you need, what do you need me to do at the church? What do you need me to be a part of? And I'm going to say this one time, and I don't think there's anyone in here that would do this, but this is a problem sometimes in churches. Just because preacher ain't here don't mean you need to miss church. And there's a lot of people that do that in other churches. I've seen it time and time again. Some churches I'd go pulpit fill in like Gary. Uh, I would tell the preachers, I wouldn't tell them you're not going to be there. Because there's people that sit in the congregation and say, well, pastor ain't going to be there, so I don't have to go. That ain't, that ain't, that's not why you're at church. You're not at church for me. You're church for the Lord. Amen. And God, through Brother Gary and Brother Charlie, will give you something that you need in those services if you'll allow it. Amen. That's just the age-old problem, if you'll allow it. Yep. you got to get up and say, hey, listen to me. Y'all know how it works. People do that all the time. One, one can't come. And then before you know it, the other ones that's laying around that was half on the fence anyway say, well, I'm not going. You get enough people to think like that, you don't have nobody in church. Amen. Yeah. So I try to encourage you all to try to find excuses to go to church yep. instead of excuses to miss church.